I'm Mark Ramsey. I am thrilled to be talking to the one and only Valerie Geller. Everybody knows Valerie Geller everywhere I go. Valerie Geller, Valerie Geller. Valerie is, of course, well-known uh, news talk consultant, well-known talent coach, and the author of the latest edition of her, uh, again, well-known book, Beyond Powerful Radio, A Communicator's Guide to the Internet Age, News Talk Information and Personality. I love What I love about this book, Valerie, is that it's got tabbed in the upper left, Broadcasting, Podcasting, Internet Radio. It really covers all the bases, doesn't yeah. it? Well, it's really about um, human communication. We're really doing life with a microphone. And it really has nothing to do with radio. It has to do with people and stories and what's going on in the world and what's going on in your community and having fun and informing and entertaining people and keeping people company on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's a relationship. It's really not radio. It's really life with a microphone. Well, isn't it's really radio life. itself, I mean, isn't that one of the points, though, that radio itself isn't radio? It's really life with a microphone? Radio is life with a microphone. Um, um, it, what's radio is just the way it gets out to people. You know, well, let's it's back up then. It's a delivery system. Let's back up then, because that, of course, is what the whole book's about. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you create this powerful life with a microphone, a.k.a. powerful radio? I mean, what are a couple of the most important elements to that? Yeah. Um, basically, the powerful radio principles are three. Tell the truth, make it matter, and never be boring. So if you do those three things, you will have an audience. You'll be able to get, keep, and grow an audience. Uh, we developed a model. I developed it probably about 20 years ago when I was working at WABC as program director. And I was training and teaching a lot of people who had never done talk radio before. And one of the curses of our business, whether it be talk radio or any kind of personality radio, is that because everybody can talk, everybody thinks they can do this. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks, oh, this shit's really easy. All you have to do is talk. And it looks like fun. But the curse is that the great ones make it look so easy. And just like a great actor or a great athlete or a great dancer, you know, how hard can it be to hit a little football across the field? Well, you know, try it and see. It's pretty hard to do mm -hmm. unless you have skill craft training and a lot of experience and a lot of practice and some real talent for it. So we definitely want to find people who are communicators, people who have something to say, people who are funny, people who can observe life and filter what they see through their own creative process, which, by the way, is all art, not just radio. It's mm -hmm. music and any kind of art, art form uh, uh, incorporates those elements as well. But I developed a model, and it goes like this. Focus, engage, opinion, position, storytelling. So if you find focus, the topics that you want to talk about, and if you really look at the things people are interested in, um, the human heart, emotion, health and safety, really that's actually number one, is my world safe? And if not, tell me what I need to do to make it safe. Um, money, and money's not really money, it's really about power. And since we're in a recession right now, there's tremendous interest in uh, how you can save money, uh, corruption around money, misuse of money, and of course what's going on in Washington uh, in the United States, deciding what is going to be, how money's going to be spent, or how money's going to be cut and not spent. So again, Health Heart Pocketbook, which comes out of the Frank Maggot and Associates studies uh, for television in the 1970s, that pretty much holds true. There was a fourth category that came in about six, eight years ago, and that category is transformation. How your life can be better tomorrow than it is today because of something that you've heard on the radio. And so that's where we began to see a lot of the do-it-yourself shows, or Dr. Phil, or the Oprahs, or uh, the psychologists on the air, Dr. Laura, uh, Get Out of Debt, Dave Ramsey, all these shows, how your life in some way can be better tomorrow than it is today because of something you're hearing on the radio. Mm -hmm. Then we really look at why listeners come. And if you understand what this experience means to somebody who's alone in a room or alone in a car, and they hit a black button and they never have to be alone, it's an amazing thing. And if, if you can imagine every listener comes to you with a bucket, and you, and you say, what, what are we going to put in that bucket for that listener? They're giving us their precious time. What are we going to give them back? So Beyond Powerful Radio and my three previous books are really cookbooks for how to come up with things to put into that bucket. How do you find focus? How do you look at all these topics and come up with a way that's going to engage a listener? How do you engage a listener? How do you not be boring? Um, what do you think about what it is you're talking about? Opinion, position, and then finally, storytelling, which is the heart of all communication and, and human connection through storytelling. You mentioned one of the rules is not to be boring, and it, it, it seems to me that that creates that's one of the reasons why the mic remains open when it shouldn't, because people are groping for that last chance not to be boring. Um, 
Now, you said you provide a lot of elements which uh, comprise the pieces to remedying that problem. I mean, what's a good way to prevent? Because I mean, again, the tendency is either less is more, as in just shut up and give me eight seconds, or more good is actually better than more. So how do you get? How do you cross that chasm? This is a great. I love this question. Thank you, Mark. It's great. Um, if you are bored, it is boring. And there are a tremendous amount of people who put stuff on the radio that they are bored with. They've been told to do it by their program director. It's part of the format. They have mm -hmm. to do it. There's a gun to their head. They have to do it. They are bored. They are phoning it in from somewhere else. I'll never forget one time I was uh, air checking a guy who had voice tracked, and I heard this sound in the in the back of the, in the background, and it was this chinking sound. I said, "What is that noise?" And he had six minutes left to go, and it was the sound of his car keys on the console. He his, he's ready to go home. He wasn't even present. You know, be here now. That's the most important thing. Uh, interested is interesting. Mm -hmm. And one of the rules that we work with, and I teach this all over the world, I work in 30 countries, and the main thing that works everywhere is, as in life on the air, don't put anything on the radio that you wouldn't talk about on air. If you're not genuinely interested in this, and you wouldn't tell it to a friend, and you wouldn't talk about it at dinner, excuse me, but why is it on the radio? Why are you boring thousands of people with something you would never mm -hmm. speak about in any other context? Mm -hmm. Just because it's the front page of the paper, if you wouldn't really talk about it, why would anyone want to hear you talk about it? When you go into a new situation, a mm -hmm. uh, new client, let's say, um, I would imagine one of the first things you do is kind of you know, assess globally what's good and what's bad, uh, or what's right and what's wrong. Um, what are the most common things that you see that are wrong? You know, kind of the low-hanging fruit, the things that people can fix first and easiest. Well, I'll never go into a station unless they, uh, somebody at that radio station makes a commitment. Do you want to change? And we pretty much have 100% success when people do these methods. When they work with this model, and they do it diligently, consistently, and they do it where they speak visually, they engage audiences, they do not allow one minute to be boring. I don't care if it's the Arbitron Diary format or if it's PPM. This never doesn't work. This is 100%. But it's like anything else. If I were to say to you, if you want to lose weight, you have to eat less and you have to exercise more. Well, okay, it sounds really easy, and I say to you, it's 100% effective, but you actually have to do it to make it work. And the same thing is true. If you want to stop smoking, all you have to do is put down the cigarette, but you have to do it to make it work. So this work, before I go into any radio station or television station, or even work with individual shows and, and on-air personalities, do you want to do this work, and how serious are you about really making a change? Because it's very hard to change, and human beings don't change unless they have to, or unless they're very, very motivated and want to. So you're saying the thing, the low-hanging fruit thing that you find most, one of the things you find most commonly wrong is that is, is not content, it's attitude. No, it's content, but in order to change content, you have to change attitude. Mm -hmm. So the attitude has to change so that they're open to creating more powerful content. Um, the three things I would suggest to pretty much any radio station or any on-air personality anywhere, and again, all this stuff is in Beyond Powerful Radio, uh, and there's more information at um, www.beyondpowerfulradio.com. If you're interested in doing a better show and, and just amping up your game tomorrow, use the word you instead of we, me, I, us, or our. Talk to one individual. So instead of we have 10 sets of tickets to give away, you have 10 chances to win. Mm -hmm. Instead of I'm standing here looking at, turn it around to if you were standing here looking mm -hmm. at, here's what you might see. Engage the audience. That's the number one thing you can do that will instantly make this less boring, up your game, and make the content more powerful. Mm -hmm. After the engage factor, which is really talk to the individual, the way to do it is imagine that before you hit the red button and go on the air, you're answering the question, why should I listen to this? Or here's why you need to listen to this mm -hmm. and then whatever you say next is that answer the next thing down would be visual language uh, men are very visual and the more you can make the word pictures and create the movie in the mind of the listener the better it works and i'll give you an example i've always thought by the yeah. way to, not to interrupt you but i've always thought that that's one of the things that we could improve most on in radio that we give a perfect example our radio spots are incredibly non-visual incredibly non-story related unless it's a guy and a girl in an office speaking dialogue and we would never speak in real life. Um, that's the kind of thing you're talking about, right? Well, it's, it's making a movie. I'll, I'll actually give you an example, and th this was a, a true example of a guy who 
uh, was doing a very normal talk show. You know, hi, my name is Blah Blah. Our guest this hour is going to be. Here's the number that you can call in. Blah blah blah. Very typical talk show. We started working with him to engage the audience, make a movie, and put that listener in it. Do this as though your life depends on not losing your audience, not losing a listener. And he went on air the next day and said, "Imagine you're on a train in Japan and you don't speak Japanese." You don't know where the train is going. People are handing you things. They're yelling at you. You're confused. You're frustrated. If you understand what that feels like, you now understand what every autistic child feels. John Johnson, the author of Understanding Autism, our guest for the hour. If you can create a movie, put the listener in it, involve the listener. There's a Chinese proverb, and it goes like this: "Tell me, I'll forget. Show me, I may remember. But involve me, and I'll understand." And if you immediately begin to involve your listener, and as in life on the air, talk to each person individually with things you would talk about off air, and obviously if you err on the side of brevity, you can always go back and revisit. But don't let anything get too long. And if you do those three things, I promise you, tomorrow your show is going to be better.